as you can tell by the title, today I'll be sh I'll be answering 10 questions that will help share my faith better. They are actually 20 questions. I got them from Christianity.com. Yeah, ChristianityToday.com. And there are 20 questions where I managed to streamline them to 10. If there's any need to do a part 2 of this video, I will do it. But for today, I'll just be answering 10 questions that will help share my faith better with all of you, with the rest of the world. Anyways, before I get into this video, if you have not subscribed, what are you doing? Like, why are you doing this to yourself? Why can't you come and join the family? Like, is it hard? The subscribe button is just here, up in the air. But please find the subscribe button and click it and also turn on the notification bell so you can get notified whenever we post a video so without further ado let's answer these questions because they're not going to answer them so <laughs> i'm sorry my brothers are being brothers anyways so um the first question is People invest time and energy into developing their career, their bodies and relationship but often neglect the spiritual dimension of their lives. How do you actively pursue spiritual growth? Personally, I think it's something that has to be intentional. The way you are very intentional about having that body goals, relationship goals, all them goals, you should also be intentional about having spiritual growth. So for me, I decided this year not to start my day with Instagram, WhatsApp, none of that social media banter. I decided to start my day with God because usually I just like scroll through my phone, then read my Bible, pray, and all the stuff. But I decided to read the, read my devotion or read my Bible first, and that is how I actively actively pursue spiritual growth. Then in my daily, I throughout the day. I try as much as possible to be positive and just keep my mind on God. That is, meditate on the things that I have read. Try and remember the things that I've read, chew it in my head, like go over it and again and again and again. Then, worship songs are another thing that really helped me in being spiritually or like pursuing spiritual growth. I listen to messages and I listen to worship songs, and these are the things that have so far helped me in spiritual. In, actively pursuing spiritual goals the second question is do you think about spiritual things now the context of this question is um is that this is usually this should, this usually leads to conversations about what spiritual means that is really religion versus relationship so i don't really know how to answer this question or that try to think back and forth about it but what i will give is that religion is mostly activity based and relationship is, you know, it, it takes your emo emotions and a lot of things that go into a relationship because when you're practicing religion, you just do activities, you do things without understanding why you do them, you just do them because they are going to give you bonus points or you think these, are, these things are going to give you bonus points. But when you pursue a relationship with God, it's more about you coming into a place of commitment and intimacy so why religion is shallow in um, a relationship is intimate and it's deep it's not just activity based like when you go to church that's one of the activities you like we usually pray in church like in my church we say okay god as we're leaving your presence as we're leaving this like gathering we're not leaving your presence but we ask that your presence will go with us so in a religion just like you have left the presence of god and you have left it but in a relationship like the presence of god accompanies you everywhere you go because you are in constant communion communication with god so that is how i'll answer that question so number three is how has this experience affected the way you look at god when I was basically practicing religion, because I grew up in the church, I grew up as a church girl, we always, like from children's church, we were really, really active about stuff and everything. You know, we, I usually used to see God as a God of sin and, sin and die. Um, how, do, how do I put sin and die? Like, um, I used to see God as, oh, if I commit this sin, I'm going to get punished for it. So I tried my best not to sin, but I kept sinning. I kept doing things I didn't want to do. 
so when i got into a relationship with god i understood that it's not by my power it's not by my mind that i can live a righteous life but it's, but it's by the grace of god like god i understood better that god has given me everything i need for a godly life he has given me the power to live a godly life and i can live it that godly life i also understood that sin is beneath me like when i mean just like the way some girls will say oh this guy is beneath me i can't date him kind of stuff so sin is beneath me like i can't do that like i'm too i'm too high class for sin <laughs> that is the way i understand it now but it's a gradual process i can't say i'm righteous or i'm holy or anything but it's a gradual process and we're getting there number four says we've never had the chance to talk about your religious background where would you say you are in your spiritual pilgrimage so i can't really pinpoint and say i'm on level this or level that because you can never know but i'll tell you that where i was before is not where i am today because i'm constantly growing i have a better understanding of god i have a better understanding of his word and i get new understandings and new revelations every day the further i dig deep into the word of god so I will tell you that there has been tremendous, tremendous growth, but I can't tell you what class I'm in because I really don't know what class or level I'm in. Spiritual growth, can never tell, right? Comment down below if you actually know, please. Let's let's keep these comment sections interactive. If you know where you are, like you can pinpoint exactly where you are in your spiritual growth, tell me and how did you get there? Put it in the comment section. Number five says tell your personal story, testimony of how you became a christian keep it to three minutes using the following outline before what characterized my life before i trusted christ how i came to trust christ after how am i different now so let's keep it at three minutes i'm going to try my best number one what characterized my life before i trusted christ like i said earlier before i grew up in the church i was a church girl we did all activities children's church very active teenage church very active got into uni still active in church but i never really 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 came to understand who god was like properly my first encounter with god how i that's how i came to trust christ you know god really god spoke to me that day and he, i can never forget this because you know when you describe the temple in the time of moses where you had like the in the outer court the inner court and the holies of holies and god told me that day you have literally been standing at the outer court and you have been welcoming people like that like, oh welcome to church hi welcome to church it's so nice to see you but i never really really felt the chance to go in I felt I had to be ready to have a relationship with God. I never felt ready enough. This is also, I'm going back and forth with this. Please pardon me. So like what characterized my life before, I never felt ready to have a relationship with God. I felt like I should be ready for this. I felt I should also hear that voice from heaven saying, my son, my son, the hour has come. <laughs> but, <laughs> well, that's not the reality of things anyways. How I came to trust Christ, it happened in my third year, second semester, in my room where I had a very massive encounter with God and it really changed my life. In fact, one of the first, thing God, first things God did for me was academic excellence, which I had been struggling, struggling previously in my academics, like I've been reading and not passing basically, but God just turned it around. That semester, I made it 4.1. And it was like wow like and I was like so I can really trust this dude now how am I different now I feel I can trust God more although I do not fully trust God in, with some areas of my life I'm still working on that because I'm a work in progress so don't judge me um, I'm still working on that and I feel but I feel I can trust God more with certain things some things I have not totally let go of but I understand it that God is good and he's good all the time like it's much better I understand that I'm in a relationship with God so I actually treat it as a relationship I don't treat it as just anything I think I'm done like three minutes I hope that was enough anyways comment down below if that was not that was enough and if that was not enough please keep a comment section where i can talk about this in a whole new video number six what is the what is your concept of god do you view him positively or negatively obviously i'm christian 
I'm in a relationship with God. I view God positively. My concept of God prior to my relationship with God was He was God, like one big, mighty, supreme being. But now He's not the way I picture Him. He's still mighty, He's still supreme, He's still God. But He's more of a father, a friend, and a lover to me. Like, I can relate to God. I, I feel like He gets me. Like he gets me and I get him too. Like it's a relationship kind of thing. I treat it I treat my relationship with God the way I would love to treat my every relationship with my future husband. Yeah, I treat it like that because I feel like that's the way I best I can best communicate. Then number seven, this is really going quick. Have you ever trusted Jesus as your personal savior and Lord? Or do you think that is something you're still moving towards? I think that is something I'm still moving towards because as I said earlier, there are some areas of my life where I haven't totally let go of. I'm still holding on to it because I think that I have the best idea or best plan for my life. But God is saying, you know what, Ella, you have to trust me. Emma, you have to trust me with this. And I'm like, mm, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe ish. Maybe ish. Like. I don't know, but I think I think I can handle this better than you do. Like God, you are God, you are God, and I'm human, and you might not understand what it is if you also be human. But then again, he understands. He came in the form of Jesus Christ, which was human. So yeah. So yes, I'm gravitating towards fully trusting God. And yes, I I I, I trust him. So yeah, I don't know if I'm I've been able to answer this question. Um. Do you find that faith and spiritual values play a role in your work, day, marriage, perspective of life? Yes, I do. Because when I read the Bible, I see how we should live, how we should treat other people. I see that God wants us to live in harmony. Even when you read Leviticus and Deuteronomy and all the laws and everything, these were laws that were given to men to, you know, guide their life to basically tell them how to live in peace and harmony but sometimes people you know we we tend to we tend to do what we think is best for us so yes my faith and spiritual values have definitely shaped my perspective of life and work too when you read the book of proverbs it tells you a lot about hard work <laughs> no food for lazy man kind of status it tells you that so many things <laughs> i'm trying to pick so many things right now but it tells you a lot about work day of course start your day with god commit your day to god yes so yes the answer is yes let me not talk too much my faith and spiritual values play a huge role in my work life and my day to day life number nine says if you could be sure there is a god would you want to know him or if you could know god personally would you want to yes i would i would want to know god like I want to know what goes on in his head. Like what is he thinking? Like okay, I want I want to know his plan. Like, what my own desire right now in my life is to know God's plan. I would like to know him personally, like one on one. I would like to know more of him. Say so, yes, if there was a God, and I'm sure there is a God because I know God. So I would like to know God more. I like to know what he's thinking. Like, what do you think about me? Do you think I'm pretty? <laughs> Don't mind me. Well, final question number ten. Do you go to church? Why or why not? Huh? I'm a good girl. That's who I'll be from the top of my head to the sole of my feet. Yes, I go to church. I go to church, and I absolutely love my community church. I love the love that. They share in church and why do i go to church sometimes it's a little bit overwhelming being on your own like when you go to church your faith is strengthened you literally get sharpened you see someone who's going through the same thing as you and you can easily you know relate it's like a community of people that just uplift you community of people who are going through the same thing as you are going through who are going through life like you who are sharing their faith their personal experience oh i've been here before i've done this before it didn't benefit me it benefited me so it's like we feed off each other in church that is why i go to church that is why i go to church anyways guys that's all I 
finished 10 questions i managed to rush them i don't know if i was able to answer these questions properly but i hope you've gotten to know me better through these 10 questions and i pray that you have a blessed weekend watch out for more videos more content on this space about encouragement inspiration faith fun and all those stuff and please if you have not subscribed i repeat do not do not waste your time subscribe what are you waiting for like what oh my god <laughs> anyways guys that is all for it do you have a lovely blessed popping weekend and i'll see you when i see you see you when i see you i'll see you when i see you i'll see you